that should do. Right. Black holes. Mm. Today we're going to talk about black holes in coffee physics. It's not got coffee in it. <laughs> <It's a prop. laughs> I actually do like coffee, but I'm just because I've just done one, so I've drunk it all. What can I say? <laughs> black holes. Right. The physicists are wrong. They're wrong. Eh? Look at my head now, isn't it bigger? Um, <clears throat> it may right. It may well be right that a lot of them are oversimplifying things because they are um, they're attempting to they tend to explain things to knobs like you and me, and there's an awful lot of complicated language which uh, they're not going to go into in a small YouTube video. So it may well be okay. Not insulting any physicists at all, but having said all that. Sorry, no, I don't understand something very, very fundamental, right? There's a guy who was, uh, he, he existed and did a lot of work and he was a patent clerk and he did this stuff to do with physics. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, he told us, well, he, he um, did um, a lot of stuff which has been verified. Yeah, so it's good science, obviously. We talk about Einstein, of course. And um, one of the things that he was, he, he said, these things, sorry, mm -mm, not physical things. Sorry, they're not there. Or at least what he meant, he, he was talking about the singularity. Because the singularity is where um, uh, essentially um, you have mass but no volume. So that means you've got an infinite density. And he's like, no, that doesn't work. Sorry, you can't have... Infinity isn't physics. Sorry, you know, and and so it's like uh, no, it's wrong, and and he's right to say that actually because there's something that's missing, and that is time. Okay, now here's a black. <laughs> okay, let me. I've muted it off. This is um, Pretty Boy Brian Cox, uh, and he's talking about um, black holes, and he's explaining them in his video which um, I think I commented on, maybe. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, but there's there's plenty of other videos you can see. Look, black holes there. Yeah, you can see it. And uh, all these things. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's an interesting guy. And it, all, all lo loads of videos of the other side. And then you get... And one I I actually do uh, think um, she's quite good at explaining things is Sabine. I don't know what her last name is now. Um, but you know what I mean. And, and she does one as well. Let's try and find it. Sabine. Sabine. What's Fender? That's the one. We have we got Brief History of Black Holes. And she does an explanation as well. There it is, see? Brief History of Black Holes. Oh, go on. Because she's good. Black holes. She does it in relatively... But before I get to this, let me mention that all my videos have captions. You can turn them on by clicking on... C right, so she's talking but about... But for most stellar objects, ah. is what we now call the black hole horizon. Right, so she's, she's obviously described... And there's lots of people who are describing what happens with a black hole. Basically, if you go into the black hole, you get sucked in, you get stretched, and eventually you hit the singularity, and they don't, don't have no clue what happened there, do they? It's like... <laughs> physics <laughs> what's that you know and so what we're basically talking about right is that they don't understand it and of course they admit they don't understand it because it's like what infinity mm, how's that gonna work well first of all you've got the wrong infinity it's not at the singularity mm -mm -mm -mm. the event horizon is the one we're talking about it's described in one I'm gonna find it sorry Sabine I'm gonna have to move on um Oh, that's another one. <laughs> and there's a... What's his name? Oh, okay. It's in my history. Let me just look in my history. Skip all the porn sites. And uh, I'll go to something which is talking about... Talk amongst yourselves for a minute, okay? <laughs> um, oh, I can do a search, can't I? Uh, black hole. Uh-huh. And it's this one that's called... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swap Star Black Hole, that's the one. 
I'm trying to go for Swartz style because it's a Swartz style radio. So talking about Swartz style radios because he's the guy. Swartz style is a mathematician. He didn't care what happened in physics. He can have infinities. So them. Um, and so we've got. There's a guy who's doing it. Ah, <clears throat> I've prepared well for this, haven't I? <laughs> um, and he is talking about Swartz style radius. I think it's there. Swartz style back on. I've seen one. You can see all these. They all have nice, interesting pictures about how the black holes work, and they always look like plug holes, don't they? Water going down plug holes. Mm -mm, it's not like that. Um, what the? And so I'm trying to find the one which I found, and now I'm not finding it. So that's really stupid of me, isn't it? Um, but basically, it's one where the guy's explaining. So this is what's trial radius. Spinning black holes, there's one there by Veritasium. Sorry, mate. The thing is, right, that video that I was showing of Veritasium, he's showing a black hole. You see, this is the thing. Oh, pig in adverts. Um, the, I'll let the advert go. But it, what he's talking about is skip. There we go. Uh, and so we have this, uh, where are we at? So we have this picture. Let's go through it. And, okay, there you go. You see, now he's showing. Look, see, light bends around it. That's what you see. Look, we've all watched, um, what is it, Interstellar. Look, can you see a black hole? <sighs> right. Number one, okay, Interstellar, what you see in Interstellar, nobody actually went with their bloody... I, it was a Sony Handycam when I was a younger person. Uh, nobody's been there with their iPhone and actually gone, look, I'm just going to film this black hole here because we're making a film. And so the, the, the scout, the what they call them, location scout he's gone there he's got oh that's right we'll film that one nobody's done that right it's not something people have done so when you see that nice which is very good okay it's a simulation they put some maths into some software and it shows this nice pretty graphic that's what a simulation is okay and so they do that and it shows that and it's really and obviously you know kip thorn wasn't it kip thorn yeah um because one of the robots was called kip and um, and he's done that, and he's he, he cre I think he basically created the the. It's probably one of the simulations he was doing, and somebody who happened to be around going, we should make a film about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, so that while they're showing something which looks great and is a good graphic, it isn't actually a black hole. It's not an actual physical black hole. Nobody's been to a black hole and filmed it with their iPhone. Okay. So, whilst obviously it's it's done through uh, a lot of research, not not taking anything away, there's a lot of research gone into it, and they've obviously done all the mathematics on it. But at the end of the day, it is just a pretty graphical video. It's an it's animation essentially. Okay, they made it up. Okay, and so while we have this thing here, and it's saying, look, this is how it looks like. That's why we see that in the film. Again, that isn't obviously that's bits of cardboard but it's showing the same thing you get this thing don't you and uh, maybe he actually shows the film yeah it does yeah yeah see why is it that it doesn't give you the bit that you clicked on uh, so let's play it and it probably get to it and so he's showing it there so look see that's how it works look remember that thing that you saw in interstellar and there he shows it look there see it's the same that's how it works piggy neck just uh, that's the one, yeah. So we've got Interstellar there. That's the, obviously the shot in Interstellar. It's the black, um, what do you call it, Gargantua? Um, and it's like, look, there's the black hole. That's not a black hole. That's a simulation. It's done for the film. It's it's probably extracted from physics. So like the uh, Kip Thorne probably had this going uh, as a physical simulation, and then they they took um, sequences from it and used it in the film or something like that. But that is not a black hole. You are not looking at a black hole. You're looking at a computer program. Okay? Based on uh, the the physics and the maths and lots of GR in there and all that sort of stuff, but it is a graphic. Now, there is a black hole that they have actually taken a picture of. Uh, what was it? Uh, not Sagittarius A. Eh? What's the other one? We had one, didn't we? Uh, oh, picture. Black hole. Ah, there you go. Look, see, right. So we've got all these pictures, right? 
Now, obviously, you can see on the screen, I've got pictures of black holes here, right? And this is, um, in fact, Wikipedia have got a page on it, haven't they? Look at that. Isn't that sexy? Um, right, and then you get... <laughs> you see, this is the thing. You get a picture like that, right? That one you can see there, I'm pointing out, obviously. And, and then you get alongside, you get pictures like this. And you go, y you see, it's the same. That, that, as far as we can tell, right, let's go to the actual graphic. Um, can I play? Yeah. So that's the graphic. And I believe this is, okay, so it's a radio image of supermassive black, it's me me Messier 87, okay? So they've taken a picture, right, with a radio telescope, right? It's not it's not visual uh it's not a visual image you, you 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 know no matter what you do you know if you had a powerful telescope that's about the size of a planet <laughs> you know you wouldn't see that because that's radio that's that's the radio signals that are coming from it which is electromagnetic it's um in the letter in electromagnetic spoil isn't it oh so it's event horizon telescope from 87 and um first direct visual evidence of supermassive black hole right so they're saying we pointed our big dish in that direction it's in space it's the event horizon telescope a huge dish and they pointed it in the right direction obviously and i mean that thing you wouldn't be you know no way you can see it with naked eye i mean that's that's billions of light years away or something like that and they pointed it the radio telescope to it and this is the radio signals what frequency band are we talking about here it doesn't actually say in the text I'm trying to read it okay uh, doesn't say right but it, it's it, it, it's radio waves I mean we can assume it's you know it's obviously not the light because it's measured with a radio telescope but that's a picture of an actual thing in space as opposed to the thing that you see in interstellar right why am i getting all upset about this and what am i what am i coming to because you're like you're there you're going all right graham all right yeah you, you, you made your point pictures and all that graphics and what, what what's going on then come on get to the point right it's got a black thing in the middle hasn't it yeah so let's go back to the videos I had one, didn't I? No. get rid of you you're about gravitation this one right so you're saying okay well that whilst it's uh, an animation uh, effectively yeah it, there's, there's some similarity isn't there you know it's like a polo <laughs> do, we, do we have polo still you know and so they're saying okay this is basically what you're looking at when you look at it you see this right and uh, what he's doing when he's explaining it with his uh, bits of cardboard is he's saying this is why you see it like that you see and, and 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 that's why it looks like well that 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 he's explaining there is why that looks like that right but when we're looking at that picture there's no line across the middle is there why because it's the real and the other one's not real um uh essentially what's going on with uh this guy right and and his explanation i'll bring that thumbnail up again there you go and his explanation is he's saying well what's happening is the reason why it looks like that is because um we talk about something that can bend space and time so what you're seeing is he's actually you know behind it or something like that it's coming through it that way and so, yeah yeah okay fine you can go with that because there are similarities aren't there between that and that yeah it's got something around it and there's a hole in the middle <laughs> you know so it's a black because it's dark in the middle so it's black hole now that right notwithstanding the fact that that is okay so this is a false color image that's radio signals it's not light but notwithstanding that right they're actually seeing like this is this is the area here this around the outside is 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 where we're getting high uh whatever wavelength they're talking about that's where it's high in the middle of it's low okay fine um so they're seeing a high amount i'm assuming i don't know but they're seeing a high amount around the outside especially on the bottom bits and uh, in the middle it's low and then there's nothing around the outside of it or less shall we say that makes the image dark they may have 
put false contrast and everything like that. You don't know. But we're going to assume it's it's a realistic sort of thing, you know, if it was uh, relayed. Right. Now, the thing with black holes, why are you ranting on about it, Graham? What's the big deal? Come on, get to the point. Right. I'll get to the point. Um, I need the Schwarzschild thing, but it's not the... Come on, Sabine. Give me give me the diagram that, that, that people give, right? Um, right. So we've got uh, particle physics, blah, blah, blah. She talks about that, blah, blah, blah. And I need to talk about the Schwarzschild radius. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we're talking about here, I think it's about here, you see. Um, oh, that's sound waves. She's talking about sound waves. Right. I'm going to stop it because I need to find the right video. Bloody. It's on here somewhere. Let me just find it. Because I was messing around. Just carry on talking amongst yourselves, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll find it. I will find it. Um, and amongst my flat earth videos. Oh, that's a laugh. <laughs> flat earthers. Wow. Interesting. Uh, dialect. So this guy. Dialect. Let me try and get that sorted out now. Uh, dialect. Good. Here we go. Right. <clears throat> so, the guy explains about, you know, space-time manifolds and how, you know, basically our perception of the way that space-time is, isn't real. And that, uh, and he's explaining in, in, in uh, you know, we've got the maths here, this is about tensors, which is quite interesting actually, because I, I didn't get it, but it kind of explains it's a matrix, it's a matrix, that's all. <laughs> um, and uh, and then he, he kind of dives into this stuff where he's showing here right about um, how you can remap Cartesian coordinates essentially uh, which are Cartesian coordinates of space and time he's got time there and uh, sorry space there and time there and he's uh, he's going into it I've got the sound turned off because it's just rude for him to interrupt me isn't it <laughs> Um, no, it's because I'm trying to synopsize and, and stuff. And then he's talking about, you know, like, because we've got a problem. Where's that graph he has? Give me the graph, man. I want the graph. No, he's not there. Well, he kind of is, isn't he? Ah, right. So, what's going on here? Not there, here. So, he's describing how you basically, you have... Uh, flat coordinates and he's, he's saying it's a bit like an earth map right because what you're doing is you're 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 mapping into a flat sheet of paper like as if it were uh, like you do with a map where it's a 2d map right and what you're doing what we're essentially doing is we're trying to show some sort of three-dimensional thing right in 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 2d okay and so in order to do that, we have to re we have to make it so it's representative. It's not it's not actually what's happening. It's just representative. Just like if you have a map of the Earth, right, and you have the map straight like that, then Greenland is not the same size as North America. You know, it's just because that's the way the map shows it that that's how it's represented. But in actual fact, it's curved round, and no, Greenland's you know a small island. Not really, no. Um, but what's happening here you can see in the graph here he's got this line going down right and it's crossing the x-axis can you see it it's a little bit reflective right and it crosses the x-axis at uh, r equals 2 gm over c squared yes that's the one right i'm gonna make it bigger and see what happens mm, kind of there so this point here I'm going to have to set this up better at some point, but there you go. This point here is where you can see the red line here. Parallax is there, isn't it? So there's a red line here, which is going down and actually meeting the x-axis there, right? 
and that is at uh, r r equals 2gm over c squared right and r is 0 because that way which way is it now this is the x-axis but what is these representing now I'm trying to see it's a Schwarzschild thing okay so we've got r is 0 central mass. so this geezer here right this is the x-axis right and this is like kind of um, the coordinate system as if we were looking at it uh, in other words <clears throat> you got the you got the Earth here, because it's, um, I guess it's an Earth, but you've got a body here, a planet or something, right? And that's, the zero is its centre of mass, right? And then you've got the, uh, oh, it's actually, a, it must be a black hole, I guess. But if it was like, uh, you know, like you'd have, uh, for instance, if it was a planet and it'd be like here, the, the radius of the planet would be like here, and the Schwarzschild radius is, is here on the inside of it, so therefore it's not a black hole. It's more like a sun, that isn't it? Yeah, if it was an Earth, it would be way over there. <laughs> um, so we're saying that the Schwarzschild radius, which is uh, it, it crosses the x-axis here. Now, why am I talking about this, and why am I saying nah? right? It's because it's crossing it right, and this is the graph of um, um, two gm over c squared. Is that right? No, it's not. No, no, no. no. Oh, there you go. There's this graph, right? So what it is is that it, it's it's R. So this is R, and this is two uh, gm over c squared R. The vertical axis is two gm over c squared R, right? So they both got the same R. Um, and when R is zero, here it crosses the x-axis. So uh, the when x is sorry, not zero. So this must be R. I'm trying to understand which way it is. Is this? This is. All oh right. He's got four. Four times two gm over well eight eight gm over c squared, and this is down here is sixteen gm over c squared. Right. So what is he plotting? He's plotting R. Against. The root of one minus two gm over c squared R. Right now, this is a square root. So basically, this is—it's it, a square root reciprocal, isn't it? Right, it's a square root of a reciprocal, right? And what you get there, because it, because it's a reciprocal graph, right? Because it is, because r is on the bottom, so that's a reciprocal, and then you're taking the square root of it. So what you're getting is, because it's a reciprocal, you get asymptotes, right? Where it's infinities, right? And these got one at one, right? Because it's one minus and then some function, some reciprocal of r, one minus some fun, uh, reciprocal of r. So when uh, r equals uh, z one, when r equals one, then two uh, gm over c squared. Whatever. This section of the equation, <laughs> this section of the equation, 2gm over c squared, uh, what's it got? 2, 3, oh. I'm getting mixed up, aren't I? The point is, right, is that you've got a reciprocal in your in the equation. This is to calculate Schwarzschild radius. The reciprocal in the equation, which gives you an asymptote vertically and an asymptote horizontally. Right, because that's what you get from a from a reciprocal. You get two asymptotes, one horizontal, one vertical. Right, where if it's just like y equals one over x, then you get asymptotes at y equals zero and x equals zero. But this is offset. I, the asymptote is offset by two gm over c squared. So that's where it crosses the x-axis. But crucially, because it's a square root, you get this curve where it goes perpendicular. Right, and it crosses. It, it's actually not an asymptote there, is it? No, but it's crossing the uh, the x-axis perpendicular to it because it, it it's a it's a square root, right? And the square root is 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 it's a loop round. It's a um, hyperbola or a parabola or something which crosses the x-axis. You see, yeah. Um, the bit that goes underneath the x-axis is actually like you have to use 
uh, complex maths with that square root of minus one and stuff like that to get it but it, it crucially it comes back so it actually is perpendicularly crossing the x-axis right now why is that interesting right because further along in his video and I know I'm really going on but bear with me it's worth it because he goes further on in his video and he shows let me show this right he's showing it's about here I think catch up right I'll cut the advert out okay so what he's showing here this is playing isn't it right he's showing it um, coming to like a, a kind of a, a cone right and he's wrapping it round and he's making it into right now he's making it into like a a curved surface that's wrapped in itself like a where you you know like you curl things up um, you get a piece of paper and you roll it up and then you try and tighten it and stuff it's like that sort of thing and I think he's got this bullet thing going on where's the bullet thing because he's showing the bullet now we're not seeing the bullet yeah yeah we are here we go right so and he's showing in the video right quite rightly he's trying to basically he's trying to demonstrate and then you got this thing which is you might be able to see it's spline there and he shows it going to kind of a cone shape almost right and he's demonstrating that that bit there is inside of the uh, if it's out if it's inside of the thing then it's okay it's like a planet or a star but if it's outside then it goes to a point right and that point is outside it's the event horizon he just said it there it's event horizon right and so he's showing here how the black hole goes down right and the point occurs at the event horizon there see so he's showing it there right now that is showing something which is sharp yes it's showing something which is, and he's trying to represent the uh, what's what's going on basically with the mathematics okay and it's obviously this is not easy to see this is difficult to see there it is and so he's saying look and he's saying it's uh, there you go did you miss it and he's showing it like it's like a bullet you know and he's he's, he's putting some irony in there as well um, but basically he's demonstrating that it's a bullet shape that's the point I'm making that it's a bullet shape right it has a point right let's go back to the graph where I'm prattling on and I get it you know that this is this is dribbling on a bit but if you go back to the graph and play okay I've obviously prepared this well haven't I uh, where are we at come on you you're supposed to put oh there you go right so that's where he's showing that now can you see the dichotomy there he's showing that it crosses the x-axis perpendicular and if you actually add in the complex part then it goes under it and sweeps back towards right because that's how it works right you can see it there and it's crossing and then it'll come back underneath I can't show it because it's out of the picture but it comes back underneath so it's not a point no it's snub it's crossing at a point there where it's it's flat the, the front is flat it's like they got a bullet and cut the front cut the tip off it I made a snub nosed bullet. There's a name for that, isn't there? Um, hollow point. It's like the made a hollow point, I think. Right? So he's got two different things there showing, and I don't know, maybe he's representing something differently, but that's what I'm seeing there. Why is it important? I have to chop this down because I know I'm practicing a long time. Right? It's because he's talking about it being a black hole. And let's go back to the black hole thing. Yeah, and he's saying he's curled time round, and that's how he's representing the time as being the curled round bit. Well, fair enough, you know. He's trying. He's trying to. This is a difficult subject, okay. And obviously, I'm saying you physicists are stupid. Well, you know, he, he's just trying to demonstrate that, and he's showing. Okay, that's like a planet, man. You know, where the the point goes inside it. So it's just like it's normal. It's a normal object, like you and me and a planet and the sun and stuff like that. Where the short star radius is way on down inside there, and so you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to get sucked in, right? Right. But when you go to a uh, black hole, I'll just play. It, I think it works. When you go to the black hole, right? It, see, look, not valid. Why is it not valid? Because it's not on the graph, is it? It's the bit that's after the, the asymptote. It's not an asymptote. Where it crosses the x-axis. Yeah? Right? In other words, right, the singularity bit and all the infinities happen way before you get down to the to the centre of the object. 
they actually occur at the event horizon. That's where the singularity of mathematics is. It's not inside the object, it's on the edge, isn't it? Right? In other words, there's nothing beyond the event horizon. Nothing. There's actually no existence outside of the event horizon. It isn't in this universe. Because the, the mathematics stop at the event horizon. They don't continue and you don't get an infinity. The infinity is the event horizon itself, you see. So how can you explain... Maybe I'm not understanding this correctly, and that's fine too. But how can you explain, right? And and, and you've got the speed of uh, the speed of causality, commonly known as the speed of light, but it's just that it happens to be that speed, right? The speed of causality, three times ten to the eight meters per second, um, right? Roughly, <laughs> give or take, you know. Uh, and he's explaining. We we've got that. So the speed of causality. Right, at that point, in the Schwarzschild radius, light cannot escape, right? Well, it's causality. Causality ceases at the event horizon, isn't it? That's what we're really saying, right? In other words, and, and, and if you watch, obviously, if you watch Interstellar, and you see um, the guy on the outside, which is in the, the ship, um, he says, you know, like, because they go down to the planet and it's been like an hour or two or something like that, maybe a few hours, and they come back and that guy's 30 years older, isn't he? And so what's happening there is that's demonstrating the difference when uh, the guy on the outside passed 30 years when the guy on the inside. So if he could actually watch it, he would see that guy going very, very slowly. They'd be all really, really slowly, and they're trying to, and the ship comes down from the water, and he'd be able to see it, and be like, watch out! And like, they're coming down really, really slowly from the water, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you've all seen it. And, and the problem is, is that that's outside of the event horizon of the black hole, isn't it? Right? So, at the end of the film, when he's going into the black hole, and you see him go in, and then the ship destroys, and it's just him, uh, still in the spacesuit, I think he is, isn't he? Right, and when he actually becomes stationary because he goes inside this five dimensional object or something that's created by future humans, isn't it? Um, that uh, and then he becomes stationary inside it. Well, <laughs> you wouldn't, you see, somebody observing from the outside will see somebody being stationary at the event horizon, right? And if it was you, what would you see? You're the guy going in, what would you see? Now, that's an interesting one because people say, Oh, yeah, yeah, you just get squashed and stuff like that, but no, you wouldn't. Because you would just continue going, but what you'd see outside would be things speeding up, like something that's on fast forward. You see, and eventually, when you get to the event, well, you wouldn't get to the event horizon, but before you got to that, you're basically seeing time passing to the end of the universe, to the end of time. At the actual event horizon, you would be experiencing the universe at the end of time. So you can't go beyond the event horizon at all, because time is just speeding up. And, and, and you would just continue going, you, you effectively would continue going, the rest of the universe would be just in fast forward and you'd, you'd experience, if you could hit the event horizon, you would experience the end of time. At the event horizon, not at the singularity. So there is nothing inside, right? So how do you get to that point? How do you get to the, the mass collapsing to create the black hole in the first place sort of thing? Well, I think what's happening basically is that the matter is actually settling on the event horizon itself. Inside, it's happening in the opposite way. So things are actually moving out because time, from our perspective, works in reverse. So that stuff, instead of going that way, would actually come this way. And so basically, the event horizon is, is effectively like the skin, if you like, of this black hole. And all the material, from our perspective, is actually on the event horizon. And the middle, actually in the center of the black hole, there's nothing there. Because what you'll be looking at, at the centre of a black hole, from our perspective, would be before time. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Because if it's time going backwards, and we're looking further in, then what we would be, if we could physically see the inside of the black hole, which obviously we can't because of the light, but if we could physically see that, we'd be looking to the beginning of the universe and before time began. So what's at the centre of a black hole? Nothing. The beginning of time. So we don't have to explain 
black holes using quantum physics like very very small the 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 the, the center of the black hole is needs to be explained by quantum physics because there's nothing there because the time has run backwards to the beginning of time yeah the next one's going to be about the big bang mm. you know where i'm going with that one see you then